Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today for this CBIA Leadership Essentials webinar, Transforming Your Business Model. This webinar series is sponsored by our friends over at Liberty Bank. Liberty Bank helps Connecticut leaders grow their business through various services, including savings options and cash management. And today we are very lucky to be joined by leaders at Slalom, a global consulting firm with an office right here in Hartford. Ellen, I'm gonna turn things over to you so you can introduce your team. All right, well, thank you so much. We are so happy to be here today. Before we get into the content, just wanna share with you who we all are and why we're even qualified to be talking to you about your business strategy and thinking about the coming year ahead and, and recession proofing. I am Ellen Last. I lead our experience design practice at Slalom Hartford. And I'm joined by Smita, who is who leads our strategy and operations practice within the Hartford office. So she and I are partners in crime day by day as we work with our clients to help solve problems, all sorts of business problems. And then we have Tyler joining us, who is one of our developers, our software developers in our Hartford office. And we pulled him in today to talk about not developing, not the work he does for Swallow, but more about a side hustle that he has and how, and he's, we're gonna use him as a case study to talk about how we might think about growing that side hustle into a huge business empire. So we're looking forward to that. And we're just thanking Tyler for being such a good sport for joining us today. Before we get into the content, just a little bit more about Slalom. Amanda mentioned that we are a global company with a local Hartford office. We like to call that global, or we say we have a, a, a global reach with a local soul. And so Smita, Tyler, and I all work in our Connecticut, in our Hartford office, right, in City Place. And most of the work that we're doing and the projects that we're on are with local Connecticut clients. And that is one thing I know I, for one, love about being at Solomon because we're really contributing and being part of our local community. And that's kind of, you know, the crux of the, of the slalom model. And if that name slalom sounds different than maybe some other consulting firms that you might know about, it's a very deliberate term. I don't know if there's any skiers out there, but the, but slalom skiers ski in and out of the gates and they see those turns and they pivot as they come. And that's really what we like to think of ourselves as, as partners with our clients and helping them to turn around those gates. And that's really uh, prevalent to today's conversation. So just to get into a little bit of what we're going to do today, we, we want to make it interactive. And most importantly, we want you to be able to leave today with a new tool and some steps that you can take to help think about growing your business, innovating and or bracing for the recession or you know whatever is top of mind for you. So we're going to start Smith is going to talk to us a little bit a little bit about the recession, what happens in a recession and how we can prepare ourselves. Then we're going to introduce a tool that we didn't invent at Slalom. It's a tool that's used across the globe at companies that you know about called the Business Model Canvas. So we're going to introduce it and then we're going to bring Tyler in and we're going to model how you might use it at a, you know, a high level, right? Just to give you a sense. We'll look at some examples from the real world and then we'll actually talk about steps that you can take moving forward as well as show you how to access the resources that we use for today's presentation because they're either very low cap cost or free to you out there in the world. So, with that, the first thing I want to share is that we know this audience consists of a number of businesses across very different industries, different customers, you have different sizes. Small business is something that we really value at Slalom. And we have many of our consultants that also have their own small businesses from Meg Warzel in our office, who has a photography business, as well as former employees that had a car dealership as well as a home building a nonprofit. So that's just a few of the examples of, of people that we have working at Slalom that not only work here at Slalom and serve us, but also serve our community with their local businesses as well. 
with that, I'm going to hand it over to Smita to talk about the upcoming recession and what we can do about it. Thanks, Ellen. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, we have been talking about the recession for a while now. Um, the, the definition which economists throw out varies based on, you know, um, the length, duration, the number of factors that go into uh, determining whether a recession is set or not. Um, A typical uh, definition uh, where everybody would agree to is it is a period of falling economic activity spread um, across the economy lasting more than a few months. So the previous slide, I'll... Sorry. So it, it, and the economic output is measured by gross domestic product. And that's, you know, based on what is produced by all business and individuals in the United States. So going by the definition um, and, and the, the way things are emerging and the trends are emerging currently, we all know recession is coming. Uh, the, the opinions differ on when it will happen, uh, how long it will happen, and what the impact will be. So, but there is general consensus around that it will happen and um, what can we do about it? If we go to the next slide, we'll... So the previous one, Ellen. So what do we know? In a recession, typically we will see clients behave differently. So if I am a small business owner, I will start uh, seeing clients talk about budget pressures, um, and them looking for lower cost options, um, them saying, oh, we are holding on to some spending, we have postponed certain decisions, or they may say, oh, this is a nice to have product or service, and maybe I don't need it now in the current situation. So we know these behavior in a recession setting. And um, the best way to move forward is to be recession ready. And as we get into, uh, you know, what, what will help us become recession ready? Um, so we will talk about, um, Ellen, next slide. Yeah. So what can we do about it? We can strategize. Uh, we can reset and grow in a recession. Yes, this is an opportunity. It is not a bleak scenario. Um, and, and many businesses have found amazing new ideas in recessions and flourished. So how can we help uh, ourselves by building strategies which are recession proof? Uh, that is our core discussion today. And the emphasis is on the strategy part because strategy is basically a series of interconnected decisions informed by data, informed by research and critical thinking. Why are we calling it interconnected decisions? Because it impacts various components in our business. It, once you set a vision or a goal for your business, you have to ensure that the day-to-day -day functioning and decision-making is informed by your strategy. Uh, at the same time, your strategy needs to look at the environment around you so you need to research your environment and understand what does my customer need? What products and services make sense in this current uncertain environment? Uh, what channels do I need, need to reach out to them? What is the value to them if they do not have the resources to buy now? Uh, whom should I partner with? So all those various decisions that you need to make in order to move forward and be recession proof, uh, is something which needs to be done as part of your strategy. And as we get into the tool that Ellen is going to walk you through, uh, we will st start looking at some of those components at a high level, uh, and we will go through the case study today to see how we can make a difference uh, to a case study uh, which Tyler represents today for us. Um, so Ellen, I'll hand it over to you now. Great, thank you. And apologies for the coughs. I'm pretty sure this is going to be my last 
act before I go down with the flu that my son, I'm pretty sure, gave me. So the, the framework that we're talking about and the tool that we're going to go through today is called the is called the business model canvas. And there's an actual book. I have it right here. I keep it handy at my at my desk that, that goes along with this. We did not invent this at Slalom. It is by Alexander Osterwalder and Yves Pignor. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. And it is a, a proven model and framework that's been used at big companies that you that you know about. What I love about the model is that it's it captures what Smita was talking about, those interconnected processes, systems, people, and allows you to really be visual about your business model and, and how you might change it moving forward as you're thinking about 2023 and what that might bring in terms of new challenges. And what I want to stress about thinking about this, this business canvas, should you choose to take it and, and try to apply it at your company or organization, is that it's a truly collaborative effort. One of the really powerful pieces about it is that it allows everybody to align and have a kind of a shared brain about where we are today and where do we want to go tomorrow. And so just very briefly, Smita mentioned there are different sections or blocks or kind of call them segments that make up the canvas. And there's even recommendations of how you might go through it, how you might order yourself through the canvas. And we're going to model that with Tyler in a little bit. First and foremost, you want to think about your customers. And Smita talked about research and data. This does not have to be a huge research effort you can start by talking with five to six of your current customers to understand you know, what the last few years have been like, what are they thinking about the future, what has changed, what new challenges are there for you to solve. Then you want to think about how do I break those customers down? What are the different segments that might cause us to deliver something distinct for each of those audiences? And who are the which are the audiences we want to focus on? Because we might not be able to serve every single customer segment. Then you wanna think about what kind of relationship are you building with those customers? And that might be different per segment. And what are they expecting from you? And then in the middle of the canvas is, is probably the most difficult part, right? It's the value proposition. What is the value and unique value that your company is bringing to the market and what needs are you serving that truly nobody else can, or at least not in the same way that you can. You're also gonna think about how are you making money, right? Most of us ultimately are here to make money. And so what are those revenue streams? How are we going after those revenue channels uh, or those revenue sources? What channels are we using to reach our customers? And given the new climate, there might be some new channels to explore that maybe you haven't been exploring to date. And then as we move over to the left side, and we're, this is going to be more clear when we move when we bring Tyler in. Who are you? What are the key activities that you are doing today, and what are the activities that you'll need to do tomorrow in order to make the changes or reach the objectives that you're you've set for yourself as an organization? Who are the key partners that you're working with in order to deliver that? What, what are you getting from them? And what are, you, what are you providing to them as part of that partnership? As well as resources that, you're, that you have at your fingertips to make, to make all these wheels move in motion together. And then of course, your costs. What does it cost you to support this business model? And where might we need to cut costs, increase costs, change? change where we're spending. That is the very, very highest overview of what the business canvas looks like. Now we're gonna actually get down and dirty with it. So I'm going to introduce Tyler to talk about his current side hustle that he has 
as well as a consultant to Slalom. And just before anybody gets any ideas that you want to partner with Tyler after this to, to grow his business, we are not letting him go from Slalom. So. But he might sell his ideas to you. I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there, Tyler. Thanks, Ellen. Yep. So as Ellen said, I moonlight as a DJ. I'm a software developer by day, but this has been a hobby of mine for many years. And um, recently I've been playing some more gigs. So what I do, yeah. So I basically, I partner with small businesses in the area um, and I have set up events with myself and other DJs and we just put some parties together and that's, that's kind of what we do. It's very small. Um, and that's, and that's that. Awesome. Smitta, did you want to say anything else about his, the, his current state? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, yep. we can. I can also walk through this minute. Sorry. Absolutely. Um, so Tyler, I just want to set the stage. The way we will um, go through this exercise is first, we will look at the current state where Tyler's current business is. Then we will talk about certain hotspots or challenges, you know, he faces within that current state. And then we will start looking at ideas and brainstorming ideas which Tyler himself has or has discussed with his peers and bring them to a future state business canvas. So the canvas is a tool to capture all the information Tyler has in his brain and to give him a perspective of, you know, how all these components are interconnected so that he can start looking at more ideas and more ways to improve his business or reach his customers. Um, so Tyler, feel free to walk through this uh, slide. Sure. All right, so we'll start over with customer segments. So I already mentioned that individuals, families, um, that would be one customer segment. So imagine somebody's graduation party or just a friend who wants to throw a party just for fun. That could be a one customer segment. Another segment could be a small business owner. So I just played this weekend at a restaurant in New Haven. If I have a connection like that, somebody could reach out to me and I could play an event. Um, so I'll go over to number two. So key propositions. Yeah, so this is the, 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 the value that I'm providing. So it's for entertainment and to basically make a, a celebration memorable. It's better with music and with DJing, you can kind of curate the night specifically how you want it. People can request the music they want. That's how that works. Channels, right, right here we have word of mouth. That's completely accurate. It's fully word of mouth. It's just all personal connections. Customer relationships, when do I interact with customers? It's true, it's ad hoc. It's when I see them around town um, or I actually see them at the event. And what was next? Revenue streams. Um, so revenue streams, it depends on, on the event. It's all what I negotiate sort of ahead of time. And what, you know, when they actually pay me at an event, sometimes people sometimes forget to pay and I'll have to remind them later, you know, so it's all very manual process of asking for payment. Key resources. Yes, speakers, turntables, all manner of cables that I have to keep organized and not mix up when I actually arrive at the event. Um, the car to store things, you need a vehicle that's big enough to actually haul it all around. And then of course, DJ skills themselves. Oh, and I forgot to mention records. I also DJ vinyl records. So a lot of times I'm carrying around many crates of vinyl records to a location. So it's it kind of labor intensive. Uh, key activities. Yes, traveling, scheduling, coordination, marketing to a certain extent, although this is all pretty much word of mouth. Um, key partners, friends, other DJs, professional contacts, business owners in the area. That's all, all key partners. 
And then my cost structure, I have to buy a lot of music <laughs> and I need to keep my equipment up to date. I have to buy the equipment. Usually those are sort of one-time costs, but occasionally you'll have somebody spilling a drink on your mixer or something like that. And then you could be out a couple hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. And then logistics. Yeah. So basically gas and that kind of thing. And I think that basically covers the current state of my side hustle. Great overview. Yeah, great overview. And Thank you. So Tyler, as we as we walk through this model, I, I know you have a vision of growing your business, but there are challenges that you're facing that we discussed. So can you talk through some of the challenges that we have listed here, which is you know something you want to address soon so that the business can grow? Sure. So to sort of replay the conversation I had with Ellen and Smita earlier, I some of the biggest with this side hustle is coordination. You know, I'm I'm when I'm doing this, it's it's something I kind of want to do for fun. So I really want to just be able to focus on the music and in throwing the party, you know, in in sort of the fun side of this, but there's a lot of coordination. I have to figure out what time, you know, the times that I'm allowed to be at the specific venue. I have to request payment, which can be sort of uncomfortable and negotiate. That's often the thing. When I actually go to the location, I have to figure out where all the plugs are and make sure that I don't blow a fuse at, at the venue. There's all manner of coordination and it typically falls on me. So that's a challenge. And I've also found that my peers face the same issues. It's kind of a common thing for me if I'm asked to play an event that I would maybe ask uh, some other friends who are DJs to help me out and, and also play and I would share the proceeds. So it's not all on me to play the whole night. Um, and they do the same thing. They face all the same kinds of issues of coordination. And even that kind of partnering takes coordination. So ultimately that that's the biggest thing, communication and the coordination between all the involved parties is, is really a big challenge. Awesome. Thanks. And this is where, you know, when we started having discussions with Tyler, Ellen and I were, you know, thinking about ideas and what Tyler thinks can solve for some of this, uh, these challenges, which seems to be common across the DJ community. Um, and knowing Tyler's uh, knowledge of technology, knowing you know what he has tried before in terms of ideas or solutions to some of these problems, um, we we started looking at what will help bring some of those ideas to his business model. Where would the impact be, and how can those ideas be further? Um, further executed on and implemented. So we used the same canvas. We started at the same point where we had the current state and started looking at what are the challenges. So that red posted notes or squares on this slide talk about the two challenges which Tyler uh, said. So in terms of key activities and uh, listed at, as number seven, coordination is an area uh, which is challenging. DJs and because Tyler is a great um, friend to many of his DJ peers, he wants to help them as well. So he is adding a customer segment that he wants to serve. He wants to solve for this coordination issue and he wants to add a customer segment, his fellow DJ peers, as, an, as somebody who can leverage any solution he comes up with. So with these two focus areas, we started brainstorming. Again, these are all Tyler's ideas, and we just used this tool to extract that information and put it in the right place and ask the right questions. So as a result of some of these conversations, we came up with the ideas that are highlighted in the yellow post-it notes or yellow squares here. And Tyler, do you want to talk through some of the things we discussed and I can um, add to it at the end. Sure. 
So I think you see here in the key activities, the first thing I want to point out is the idea of a digital platform. So this would be like a, a brand new sort of activity for this business. And the idea would be that there would be some sort of hub where to coordinate the various parties. Um, the value proposition for this is that you have choice as somebody who, from both the DJ perspective, the venue perspective, and the ultimate end user perspective, or shouldn't say end user, but um, because end user crosses all three of those categories, but the 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 person who is putting on the party. Sometimes that is a business, the venue itself, and sometimes that's somebody who wants to to rent the venue for a part uh, an event. So choice between all those parties so they're able to vet what they want and convenience is a huge a huge thing when somebody does this now well, the way they have to do it is basically ask around and ask for friends and ask for my phone number and text me and we have to manually work everything out community is another value proposition you're able to kind of foster this community more easily where if everybody is able to contact each other more more readily. So what else do I mention here? Key partners, um, event organizers, for sure. The people who are going to be putting on the events, you want to bring them in even further. Um, and let me see what else here. I think those are the main things that I want to mention. I mean, I also mentioned they do the customer segment of, of fellow DJ peers. They're Creating a platform like this could create a situation where there's um, revenue sharing, you know, where people are sort of working together, um, using a shared platform to pull opportunity and split revenue. Absolutely. And, and Tyler, we also talked about how as you get more and more fellow DJ peers on that website or platform out. Or, or marketplace, uh, you would need to advertise for them so that they people know that this is a right. place to go to uh, in order to sign up any of those DJs that are on that list. There. And, and that will also give them more choice, the, the customers more choice. So there's a kind of a network effect where you have the customer as well as the DJs there and the bigger the population on both sides, uh, more the use, the, the platform is used more and, and there is more growth in business. Yep. Uh, we also talked about the cost associated. This, this platform or the technology solution we are talking about would come at a cost. And that's what we have highlighted as a digital infrastructure. You would need right. people to create that or uh, be part of an existing marketplace. Uh, or a website. And in order to bear that cost, you may have to charge some of these people commissions, which is reflected in the revenue streams. So you may ask for the DJs who get growth in their business through the platform to share some commission or some cut out of the fees that they charge. So how this, this slide puts everything together in order to explain what that strategy or direction should be. Um, it, it, it took us a few hours to work with Tyler to arrive at some of these things which Ellen and I do not know about. It is all Tyler's information. He has worked in this space extensively. He has tried solutions before. And based on what he has done, he's now making choices, right? He could have tried something else, but based on what he has already tried, he feels this is the way forward. So strategy is also about making choices, um, putting your energy in a particular direction, um, breaking it down into these key components, and then informing the day-to-day -day operations of your business moving forward so that every component of the business is marching towards that goal. And Ellen, anything you would like to add here? No, I just just to just to jump onto that last point, you know, which I didn't mention, but focus is just so important, right? 
with so many challenges, it feels like everything can be a good opportunity. But if we if we spread our focus on all initiatives, we won't be able to make as much progress as if, like Smith is saying, we make some decisions, informed decisions, informed on data and focus. We can always come back to the other ideas once we've knocked the ones that we've decided to prioritize out of the park. Awesome. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Tyler. Thank you. Thank this is fun. This is what we, Thanks, this is Tyler. one of the things we call a voluntold moment. <laughs> Thank you. I I don't see any questions coming in uh, right now, so I'm just I'm gonna keep going, and we have a little bit of an interactive bit here because now that we've gone through the exercise at a high level with Tyler, what I we wanted to put a couple of examples from the real world in front of you and have you guess can you guess which business this business canvas is representing? Why I love these examples is because it shows that that uh, the connections that we've been talking about, how each segment impacts the other and where those dependencies are, because that will ultimately drive what activ key activities you do and uh, the strategies that you take. So this is a hospitality company. It's what we would call a double-sided market. So similar to the business that, uh, that Tyler is thinking about. There are hosts that offer a place for folks to stay. There are travelers that take them up on that. I feel like this one is a little bit of a softy. I'm going to open up the first poll. Can anyone guess which company this business model is represented? The business model is a transaction cut from each booking. And in the pandemic, this business saw a lot of growth, unexpected growth. I can't see who's answering, so I'm excited to see. Uh, as people started looking for, uh, you know, a place away from their home to All work right. and for a long time. Okay. So I think I can open up the results here. Oh, okay, that may not work. Oh, here we go. All right, you got it. Well, Airbnb, a couple of VBROs, but you're right, it was Airbnb. Oh, let me get this out of here. Excellent, We're already, you're already pros. Okay, so the next one's a little bit harder. We're gonna do one more. So this is a, a manufacturing company sells mostly you know appliances personal appliances not inexpensive but they really relied on their strategy has been really relying on their technology patents and the fact that they offer just a really really high quality result that's poll number two can anyone guess which business model or which business is being represented by this model a lot of their costs are around research and development in order to develop and design those patents. A couple more seconds, 10 more seconds. All right, closing. Wait to see results. All right, I see OXO or OXO, Tesla, LG, Samsung, GE. No, nobody got it yet. This business model represents Dyson, actually. And I will say I am recently a proud owner of the Dyson hair dryer, and it is all it's cracked up to be. And I do not work for Dyson. They are not paying me. I'm just sharing some tips as a consumer. Awesome, well, thank you for participating in that. I wanna hand it over to Smita to talk a little bit about, about how to use this to prepare for the recession. Uh, thanks, Ellen, can you hear me? Yes. So um, 
we wanted to go back to where we started in terms of, you know, how do we recession proof? Uh, so this tool can be used to reevaluate products and services. Um, as you start using this tool more and more, you can use it for various scenarios where you are focusing on one product out of the many that you offer, one service out of the many you offer, and do some planning around how it impacts your customers, how it impacts your partners, how it impacts your costs and revenue streams. Um, and then prepare and plan around, you know, the best possible outcomes that you see or you can uh, forecast. Um, this also can be used to assess the volatile environment. A lot of our um, businesses are facing supply chain issues, for example. Um, a lot of um, customers are moving to more and more digital spaces. Some customers need more out of everyday products and services. So having those conversations with customers and partners to understand what challenges they are facing and how we need to prepare and address it before uh, things go south. Um, this is another way of doing scenario planning and seeing what happens if supply chain delays something or what happens if customers all want a specific feature in a product or a particular type of service. So anticipating some of those challenges in advance, preparing for them, looking at the at the environment and what competitors are doing um, is, is another way of you know, assessing this environment. And last but not the least, brainstorming new ideas. We all want to move ahead and give the best to our customers and, and clients. And that's where we need to continuously learn from what's happening out there, whether it's a technology related uh, uh, update that we need to be aware of and bring to our customers, whether it's a new patent or a new idea which the customers love, um, whether it's a new way of delivering a service. So um, this business model canvas can be used for those new ideas to test your hypothesis, whether this will work or not. Again, uh, it connects all the components, key components of the business. It gives you an idea of where the impact would be on revenue, cost, partners, what additional effort you need to make in terms of channels, uh, in terms of activities, in terms of resources, etc. So um, it's a great tool to set direction um, and, and go into details of each of those components as you explore, bring that information back, and then um, keep keep your business agile. So the, the key part of this is strategy is never constant. You have to adjust very frequently to the changing environment. Having this tool at, at your desk will help you strategize quickly and understand the entire picture very quickly. Uh, Ellen, I'll hand it over to you. Great, thanks, Meda. As I mentioned at the top of the presentation, one thing as we planned for this webinar that was really important to us, knowing that different that all of you were going to be coming from different scenarios, different different industries, we've we've made it look simple here, or at least I'm getting maybe it feels simple here. But we want you to leave with actual next steps that you could take this tool forward to help you in your business. And so, and this is fresh of mind for us at Slalom because as I mentioned, we use the business canvas for ourselves and we just went through the exercise at Slalom Hartford as a, as a group. There was a, a group that was selected among the leaders as well as some of our consultants uh, that are earlier in their career to initiate and kick off an effort for to establish our business canvas, our business model for the next three years. And so I'm you, these steps are, are generic, but we at Slalom literally just went through this process. So as I go through it, I'll be able to share with you a little bit about what our experience has been like in the last 
like, you know, we, we just kind of socialized our new model internally last week. Smitta mentioned early on about the importance of research and being data driven. And I, I chimed in to say that doesn't have to be an intense research effort. Even just having four to five to six conversations with customers is enough. That's enough customers to give you, allow you to see some trends that might be challenges that you didn't know about or challenges that are maybe more nuanced than you thought about. While not too much data to get to edge cases or something that maybe just one of your customers might be dealing with. So, you know, I think that's a great place to start if they're friendly customers or if you have another way to reach customers and you can even incentivize them in some way to just have a conversation with you, seek out stories from them, understand what's changed in their world and how might you be positioned to help them with those new challenges. There's also a lot of great data already out there. We have partners in Connecticut. We have a great uh, local or state run database uh, for you to find data that's out there in, in Connecticut, as well as just the world. Google is our friend. Lots of great data if you don't have the ability or, or can't talk to customers for a while. And in addition to talking to, to customers, just some you know, simple third party research. And when we did this part, the research piece with Slalom, we broke up into different teams and each team kind of researched a different area. Some researched our customers, some researched our competitors. That might be one way to think about it. And I think also the piece that gets skipped a lot is what did we learn from that? What were the insights that we took from this new information we picked up and how, and, and, how might we take those insights further? So that's phase one or step one. <clears throat> step two is what we did with Tyler, aligning on the current state. What does today look like? And by and this information might be out there in your organization in a different format. By putting it into the canvas, it gives whoever's working on this a shared language for what our current state looks like. And it's a time to be honest with each other and yourselves. And while we like to tell all the amazing, awesome things that we did, even in the hardest of times, what's not working? Because that's what's going to help us propel forward. And let's get that, let's get those challenges down and align on those. And then of course we said that, we said earlier how important it is to prioritize the challenges that we're gonna go after and not try to tackle everything at once. Once your team has aligned on what that current state looks like, and we all agree, yes, this is our current understanding of today, the fun work and the hard work comes into what does the future look like? And this is a great time to engage other leaders across the company, as well as not, you know, not non-leaders, I guess, for lack of a better word, to a, you know, really hold each other accountable, make sure that we're not getting different information at the top as leaders that's inaccurate from what, from information that's happening at other parts of the company. And also, you know, brainstorm. Uh, we, in, in design, in the design world, we call that diverging, right? Being open to all ideas. Think about flipping the model on its head. When we were brainstorming for slalom, we did some some exercises just to to break our old ways of thinking. And we said, "What if slalom was a completely different business model? What if we were a, a subscription business? Or what if we were a double sided market? What might that look like?" And what that did was kind of got us out of our our habits and old ways of thinking, and we uncovered some new ideas that may have sounded a little kooky to start but found their way in some way, shape or form into our future state, or at least inspired something into our future state. So I really encourage you when you're in that brainstorm phase, break out of the mold. You, know, you can always come back and converge. This is called double diamond thinking, <clears throat> but you wanna spend that time thinking about the ideas that maybe don't even seem like great ideas at the moment. The piece of the, the aligning and working through the future state is what took our solemn team the bulk of the work. We got back together several times. We broke down different sections. We collab, we broke up into groups and then we came back and collaborated and aligned. And ultimately we got to a place where we agreed on, 
this is what we want our business to look like over the next three years. And here are the key activities that we're going to implement in order to get there. And then lastly, you know, potentially the hardest part is not only going and implementing and making those changes, which will likely impact your whole organization, but also measuring the impact. Are the, you know, are, were our big bets right? Are we reaching, are, is, the, is there evidence to show that we're heading in the direction that we said we wanted to? And if not, how are we going to pivot and change what we're doing in order to stay aligned to the strategy and grow our business. And so that requires rigor and you know, regular meetings and also the ability to measure and track your progress. You don't have to go it alone. There are amazing tools out there for you. One tool that we, we didn't use today, but it is, it is free to use, there's a free version and then also a very low cost um, version above that. It's called the Canvanizer. It's been around for a while. There's several versions in there and it gives you that framework that we went through with Tyler with sticky notes right in it. And you can use that with your team if you so choose. I created an account and was playing around with it and I thought it was fantastic, especially for a free tool. There's the book. It is not a cheap book, but it's $35. Uh, for those of us that participated in the business, in the business model exercise at Slalom, we were we were gifted one of these books. Mine's all marked up right now. What I love about it, it's a picture book. Look at the picture book. It shows examples, it gives really specific activities that you can do. It has all the prompts. So it's a great thing to kind of have at your side while you're going through the exercise. It's been a fantastic resource for me. And then what goes along with the book is a website called strategizer.com. And we're going to send this presentation so you'll be able to have all these resources. But you can see it's also noted on the book here. And strategizer.com has not only other examples of business models, but tons of templates and resources and tools that you could uh, export and use. I think they're mostly PDFs as well as blogs, articles, all such, all sorts of really great content to help support you in going through this exercise. And with that, we have about 12 minutes left would love if there's any questions to open it up. And if not, I would just offer that we are here, Slalom is here. If you have any questions, you can, and we can provide our email addresses. You can also find us on LinkedIn. I'm fairly active on LinkedIn, Ellen Last. And I know Smita is also available. Love to answer any questions that you have, help you through this in, in any way that, that you might need. And would love to hear from you. If, you. if you attempt to use it, if you take it and run with it, we would love to hear about that experience and how it worked for you.